Ho finito, ti è, l'ho finito, ti è. Bentornati amici di Clan of Gamers, io c'è niente, c'è un tuzzo, eh, assolutamente devo continuare sto gioco perché è folle. Eh, andiamo sempre con The Stanley Parable. Un attimo solo che voglio vedere una cosa, sulle opzioni. Eh, C'era qualcosa che non andava, mi vedevo la scritta un tantinello strana. Ok, siamo ripartiti. Sempre The Stanley Parable. Oh, oh. I say forget the adventure line, what's it ever done for us? We're intelligent people, Quanto right? rompi i coglioni. Why can't we make up our own story? Something exciting, daring, mysterious. Oh, this all sounds perfectly doable. Why don't we simply start wandering in, well, I don't know. How about this direction? Quale? De là. Mi vuoi portare di qua? Va bene. Oop, dai, faccio botte con le porte intanto. Now, yes, this is exciting. Just me no. and Stanley forging a new path, a new story. Well, it could be anything. What do you want our story to be? Go wild. Use your imagination. Whatever it might be, Stanley, I'm ready for it. <laughs> Niente, sto gioco è una specie di droga. Oh no, not you again. Stanley, I'd also like to veto the line from having any role in our awesome new story. No lines or monitor rooms. Just don't acknowledge it. Ok. Fai un po' tu. Io ti seguo. Io sto parlando perché praticamente questo gioco è una sorta di discussione che lo sviluppatore di questo gioco, gli sviluppatori di questo gioco, secondo me, stanno facendo con noi. La cosa bella è che lo stanno facendo mentre ci giochiamo. Cioè, secondo te dovrei andare là sopra? Come ti faccio andare là sopra? Vabbè. Quindi questo non è un gioco. Chi cerca la fine, credo, di questo gioco sbaglia. Ah, wow. a choice. We get to make a decision. From here the story is in our control. How Vi sarete qualcuno che ha anche fatto dei trucchi. Il gioco l'ha sgamato, perché sembra proprio che abbia una sorta di. Cammina in cerchio. Non manco se ti ammazzi. Which means that somewhere at the place where we're trying to go, there must be a reverse door that leads here. <laughs> And that in turn means that our destination corresponds with the counter-inverted reverse door's origin. So starting from the right, let us ask, will taking the right door lead us to where we're going? And since the answer is clearly yes, then by all accounts, the door on the right is the correct one. Te voglio assecondare. Come Stanley, our destiny awaits. Ecco. Conf... Il finale confuso. Tutte e due portavano qua, merda. Hmm. The confusion ending. You're telling me that's what this is. It's all one giant ending. Vedi, qui c'è tutta la storia. And we're supposed to restart the game eight, eight times? Prima, seconda restart, terza restart, vedete? Sixth restart. It's all determined. So now, according to the schedule, I restart again. Then what? Am I just supposed to forget? Well, what if I don't want to forget? My mind goes blank simply because it's written here on this, this thing, wall. Well, who consulted me? Why don't I get to decide? Why don't I get a say in all of this? Is it really? No, it can't be. I, I don't want it to be. I, i don't want the game to keep restarting. I don't want to forget what's going on. I don't want to be trapped like this. La discussione fra lo sviluppatore che ha la voce del narratore, secondo me, il sviluppatore è inteso come tutti e noi che stiamo giocando è quella riguardante dove vogliono andare i videogiochi a questo punto, cioè verso un gioco uh, lungo e predefinito o qualcosa di open world, diciamo di, di aperto che lascia tutta la scelta. Alla, al giocatore e poi anche in quest'ultimo caso ma la scelta vale la pena è vera cioè c'è una scelta oppure il programmatore ti porta a scegliere quello che, che lui vuole suppongo che eh sì non è tutti torti suppongo che comunque sia questa una, una storia se poi fai i pip mentali detto meno canne meno canne meno canne Well, in the meantime... Mi fa ricominciare sicuro. Beh, per forza, ogni volta che loda. Dai, eh. Quindi. Bene, bravo Ciccio. Ti stai divertendo, eh, lo so. Ma anche io. 
Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Chi c'era una porta? No, vabbè. Intanto qualcuno ancora là. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office. <laughs> Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, <laughs> maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. Due giorni così e poi mi ricordo le scelte che ho preso e quello del. He began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? Sì, da muove se stanno a rivedere. Said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! He yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers mm. weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh, come on. And he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that of course this was not a dream. Ammazza quanto mai rotto il cazzo. E dai, falla finita. Believing that if he's asleep he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself. Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain beyond a doubt that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. <laughs> St
Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. E me lascia lì, bella merda, brava. Ok, rifamola e seguiamo di, vediamo un po'. Vedete quando diventa ripetitivo, quando non mi cambia... I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. Oh, won't we all just laugh and laugh at the time I thought everyone had gone missing? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. This time it doesn't make me open the bathroom. Manco chiude la porta. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, what dark secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. Yet incredibly, by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad, Stanley happened to input the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. No, vabbè, andiamo avanti. Voglio disobbedire. 
At this point, Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. Vediamo un po' se torniamo indietro che succede. La porta si è chiusa. Stanley thought better of it and realized he simply had too much to live for. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. Mm -hmm. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept fired, it blindly? Fired. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power. Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Oh, Stanley... I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that off. machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. How long until detonation then? Hmm, let's say... Um, two minutes. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. But what precious moments each one of them is. More time to talk about you, about me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where to start. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated? All right, I'm in a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. 
Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go-around will be even better. My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious. Questo film è già meritato, in pratica, anche quando ho spinto off. Si prende per il culo sto gioco. È stupendo. Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's fine. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No end in here, just you being blown to pieces. Will you cling desperately to your frail life, or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count, or don't. It's all the same to me, all a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say, happily ever up. Ti sei divertito? La cosa difficile è che tu capisci, che, tu cap che non riesci a capire, mi sono picciato, l'ho detto stasera, la cosa difficile è che non mi puoi fare niente nella realtà, perché io sto giocando a un gioco e tu non sei nulla, sei una merda, non vale un cazzo, non mi puoi fare fisicamente del male. Ti piacerebbe perché tu avresti le possibilità. Eh? Vaffanculo e prendo a destra. Cerco di fare scelte che non ho fatto prima. Vediamo un po'. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Qui mi sa buttare sotto e sono morto. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. Ci to put your detto, work aside. Tutto. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug <laughs> the phone? 
No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't know that was possible. No, it's me. It's my little cool. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. Yeah, this is why you've so. been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens Steven. of impoverished third world nations. Or he could no, systematically no. set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. <laughs> Pratica. Vediamo. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. <laughs> Mi porta, guarda sta merda. Mi ci porta, mi riporta, mi fa scegliere di ritornare da dove sono partito. Guardate, oh, mi caio sempre io qua. Mannaggia, queste porte. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending. The story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Mm. 
Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this, until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Night Shark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. To the ordering end. Night Shark 115. Mm -hmm. Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver. Right ah, there. Intanto the non wall. puoi prendere i, i dati della, della voce, su, forza. Non puoi prendere. <laughs> non, non puoi, non, non c'è credo, non è possibile. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Sì, sì. Otherwise we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. Night Shark 115. Okay, fine. You're not going to do it, but you know what? <laughs> it's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. <laughs> I bet. Exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Dai, ci voglio rivenire. Ci voglio fare pazzi. Dai, io. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Oh, that desk, that's the cats. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Ti crepo, gioco di merda. Ti crepo. Non ci fai andare qui, eh? Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe after everything we <laughs> talked about that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about sì, seeing the game molto. undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? 
To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. <laughs> up I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought <laughs> hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Oh. Loser. My story. I if you'd so. just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen that there was a whole underground it. facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, <laughs> please. I, I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Ah, bello. Are you listening to me? Ho finito, ti è! L'ho finito, ti è! Stanley, this is important. L'ho finito, stronzo. Mori! Ha ha ha! Mori! Cretino, eh! Non so chi ha preso per culo, se io te o tu me avendo acquistato questo gioco. Eh? Stanley non c'è più, sono fuori, scemo, sono fuori, scemo. Fuori, fuori, sono proprio fuori, sono fuori, sono proprio fuori. Un esaurimento nervoso sto gioco, ha fatto prendere. Va, fanculo, va, fanculo, va, fanculo. Se all'ultimo mi dici che non è vero. Galactic Cafe <ride> Bravi, complimenti, bravi, veramente divertente, mi avete fatto veramente sbellicata le risate, mi avete fatto ammazzata da ride. Grazie per tutto, ragazzi, finisce Stanley Parable da che cazzo io ricomincio <ride> te credo di te ciao a tutti da Aria per canalgamers.it yeah! <ride>